Let me take that off mute. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to Tezonomics Live. I'm your host, Ben Sullins. And uh, yes, I am in a new studio here, so I uh, hope everything goes smoothly. Uh, if not, please forgive me. Uh, may, if you guys recall, when I first started doing live streams, it took a little while to get things ironed out, but um, I've tested it, and hopefully things go good. I have uh, an insane amount of stuff to talk about today. I really hope to get to the Q&A for everyone that's uh, watching and waiting on Crowdcast. I definitely will get to some, um, but make sure to go vote on those questions uh, so all the more more important ones bubble up to the top. So uh, before I get into the news, uh, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, this is a live show to run maybe about an hour. Um, and if you uh, want to watch any of the individual stories, I'll post them later in the week, just the clips. That way you can just follow along there as well in case you you know, are celebrating Memorial Day or any other holiday today, which a lot of people are. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first thing I want to talk about is I'm running a new promo, and this is a campaign to get to 100,000 subscribers. And I don't know why I had this in my head, but I feel like it's an important milestone, and I really want to hit it this year. And so I thought, uh, just you know, raise capital when you don't need to kind of a thing. Let's do a giveaway where you can help me reach this goal of 100,000 subscribers and get some really cool prizes in uh, in exchange. So one of those things is the grand prize, which is you get to drive a Tesla Model 3 for a full day, a full 24 hour rental on me um, through Turo. Now Turo is not sponsoring this. Uh, I'm actually going to be paying for this myself. So this is a prize that I'm throwing out there for you guys um, to help you spread the love. And here's kind of how it works. Uh, you go to teslanomics.co slash 100K, as you can see on the screen there, and you can enter to win in uh, three different ways. One is you subscribe to my channel on YouTube, uh, which you may already be. Uh, you can sign up for the newsletter, which gets you another entry. And then here's the big kicker. You can refer friends with your custom link, and each friend that does one of these things gets you three more entries into the giveaway. So there are three ways uh, to go there. You can rack up a ton of, of entries by referring friends. And after you go through the process, you'll get your own custom link, uh, kind of like how the Tesla referral program works. Now, one person, as I mentioned, is going to get a full day rental on in a Tesla Model 3, um, and that's gonna go through Turo. Now, if you don't have, if the Model 3 is not available, we'll give you a credit for essentially the same amount, so you can rent whatever car you want. Um, but hopefully there is one and, and you'll get to drive it. Now, the other thing is that we're also going to be throwing in some wash mist kits from Elite Finish. They're the guys that do did the ceramic coating on my car, and they're they're throwing in some of these wash mist kits, which are these waterless wash systems for your Tesla or for any car, really. So those will be going out. We'll also throw in some Teslanomics t-shirts, like this super cool one I'm wearing here. This is called the Superhero uh, version, um, and some TeslaCon 2018 tickets. Now, I haven't announced any details about TeslaCon 2018, but it is going to be very limited. Um, so all of those things are kind of up for grabs here. We'll have 11 total winners. Um, one person gets the car and then 10 other people get the rest of those things. We'll kind of spread it out. So uh, all you do, go to teslamics.co slash 100K, uh, click on any of these options here, you know, subscribe on YouTube, and then you can refer friends and uh, and go from there. And um, let's do it. I'm running it for three months. It's 92 days exactly. Um, so, you know, thanks for your support in advance. And I hope we can we can hit this because that would be that'd be pretty amazing. I, I'd be pretty, uh, pretty happy with that because I know it means um, that you guys are willing to, you know, take some time. There's no money involved, so you don't have to pay for any of this, but, you know, just giving your clicks and your time and attention. So uh, thanks for that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, I just did an interview of my friend Joe Scott uh, over, he has a channel called Answers with Joe, and um, he got his first impressions of driving a Model 3. And he is a great storyteller and really, really smart guy. Um, his channel is really interesting. I'm publishing an interview with him later in the week, but we had some fun in my Model 3 in Palm Springs recently while he was out there for uh, ClamorCon, which is an influencer kind of YouTuber uh, conference. And, uh, and I think it's cool because you guys can um, get kind of... Uh, a, a, a non-Tesla owner, kind of an outsider's opinion, um, and see what it's like, what you may go through if you currently don't own a Tesla and are hoping to get one soon. So I'll put a link to that down in the description, as well as stay tuned for my interview with him about his channel and all the cool stuff that he has going on um, later in this week. All right, so that's first up, um, and just a little bit of housekeeping. Next, I want to talk about my friends Eric and Sean that just completed a hypermile world record. They were able to drive their Model 3 for over 600 miles, 606 
1.2 miles um, on a single charge. And there's some interesting stuff about that that, that really stood out to me. So the first thing um, is that they only got six, I'm sorry, 66 kilowatt hours. Uh, and when I did mine, it was 75 kilowatt hours. So I've actually reached out to Tesla to ask what's up with that. How is that even possible? Because nine kilowatt hours is a, is, a, is a big percentage of the overall battery. Um, and it's also piqued my interest. Maybe I'll go do it again. Now, uh, they had some conditions here. You know, it was over 108 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really hot. Um, and they drove essentially, uh, if you can see, for 32 hours, uh, really slow on this lap that only had 10 feet of elevation change. So it's pretty flat. Um, and they, they did it for, you know, and they got 110 watt hours per mile, which is, dramatically lower than what you will get right that that's like uh 50 or more uh better than than you'll get in a normal situation which is what i did um in my test there so i i may go do this test again um i'm not sure this was interesting and stay tuned because i should have an answer from tesla about what's up with them only getting 66 uh kilowatt hours when i got 75 i know that the battery packs have some of this reserved and there are reasons for that but that's a big difference so i'm curious what's going on with that now the link or in the video they did three live streams and it was just uh, or maybe more even um it was kind of crazy but you can see you know here are some of the stats of them driving and there's a moment when it actually starts beeping and they have to pull over and they actually have to get out and push so uh, first off, just cheers to you guys for doing this because holy crap, that that's a lot of work. Uh, I would not be doing that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I put in a lot of work, but that that's probably a bit a bit more than than I'd be willing to. So uh, thanks guys for doing it, and definitely go check out uh, Eric and Sean's channel if you guys haven't seen them. I'll put links to uh, to this video um, and and this whole story in the description after the show. Okay, next we're going to talk about kind of the the big story here, and this is. Uh, coming from Yo-Yo Shu, uh, who is a, uh, a, a he, he's, he's a Tesla evangelist, really. Uh, I really think what he's doing is really cool. Um, he's been an owner since 2014, and after he got his Model 3, he was so kind of uh, uh, excited about it that he wanted to take it on a world tour. And a lot of you guys know him. A lot of you guys have been following him on Facebook, uh, where he's been, um, he's been posting. He has a thing called, uh, I think, Tesla Model 3 Road Trip. And he's literally been driving around the world with this car. Now, he posted this tweet uh, just last week uh, on the 25th, and it's really sad, and I want to dig into this because I think there is a lot to unpack here. Um, and I have a lot of quotes, and so I'm going to read kind of what happened and then my thoughts on it, and we'll just kind of work through this because I think this is really important for the community to understand and for everybody to to really kind of uh r really get the full context i don't think it's something that that you can just judge on face value okay so uh first off what happened well he he did a post and i'll read it to you um here on facebook where he's been where he's been sharing this this is the tesla model 3 road trip and uh i'll just read you the bit here about what actually happened so he said my left hand was grasping the bottom of the steering wheel during my drive. Uh, my right hand was resting on my lap. The vehicles showed no signs of difficulty following the road up to up until this fork. At the gore point, um, as the gore point began, approximately eight eight uh, meters before the crash barrier and the end of the fork, my Model Three veered suddenly and with great force to the right. I was taking a glance at the navigation on my phone and was not paying full attention to the road. I was startled by the sudden change in direction of the car, and I attempted to apply additional grip onto the steering wheel in an attempt to correct the steering. This input was too late, although I was only uh, a few inches from clearing the crash barrier. The front left of the vehicle near the wheel well crashed into the right edge of the barrier, resulting in severe damage. I am towing the car there under recommendation from locals as more resources are available. So he's towing, towing it to a service center, um, including the resources to repatriate the vehicle back to the United States. Okay, so let's let's take just a quick look and see exactly. This is the shot there where you can see the front. Um, he was in autopilot, first off. And as he said, he had his hand on, on the wheel, um, wasn't paying full attention. Uh, and then it, it shifted with the gore point, almost cleared it, but then caught the edge of it. And now essentially the car is, is totaled. Um, it looks total to me. Uh, so a, a little bit more um, a, a about this. So he said that he needs to sh repatriate it back to the United States in order for Tesla to pull the logs. That seems kind of odd to me. Um, 
this is software stuff. I don't know why they couldn't do it. He's in Greece right now. This has happened in Greece. Uh, so a little, little confusing that, but that's going to be really expensive. So I'm curious. Um, I don't know if he, he's published exactly uh, what he's going to do, but uh, we are going to have a chat tomorrow, and then I'll be publishing that interview shortly after because I really wanted, really wanted to just talk through this with him and, and get his story uh, uh, firsthand. Now, he also in the statement said, Autopilot has limitations that currently can only be overcome through human intervention. Uh, by looking at my navigation and by not having both hands on the wheel, I was not paying full attention to the road while the vehicle was in autopilot and was not following Tesla's directions in regards to the correct use of the software. I want to make it clear that I take responsibility um, for my actions. So I, I give him applause for that. Uh, I think that that's important. I think more people don't do that, especially folks that are that have autopilot issues like this like if you recall the 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 woman that slammed into the back of a fire truck in um in utah recently did also own up to it she said she was not paying attention um and, and looking at her phone so uh, it's important and i think uh you know yo-yo is doing a, a good thing here for this so uh he also said uh you know in his statement I do not believe that there are many Tesla owners who, when using autopilot, always keep both hands on the wheel and provide their undivided attention in monitoring the road and, and the software. This collision was directly caused by autopilot by the autopilot software seriously malfunction and misinterpreting the road. I agree. That is unrealistic and hardly, I doubt anybody, maybe a few people, but, but the norm when you're driving with autopilot is that you can kind of relax and not pay as close attention. You still may have your hand on the wheel. You still may be looking straight ahead, uh, but you're certainly uh, relaxing a little bit. And that's kind of the kind of the pitch. That's it's kind of the thing. So I agree with him when he says it's unrealistic. Um, then he follows that says many Tesla fans will likely dismiss this as my fault, but I implore those who believe so to take a full step back and put themselves in my shoes as a driver who had used this amazing software for so long and who could not have anticipated such a sudden and violent jerk of the wheel to one direction while traveling at a fast speed. I hope that my fellow owners will be less dismissive of various incidents regarding autopilot and understand that the general public views these, uh, the general public views these severe collisions differently from the owner community. I completely agree. I think that uh, other people that are non-Tesla owners see this as a, oh my God, Tesla's killing people, what's going on? And they probably overreact. And then on the others, on the flip side, the Tesla community as owners that have been with them for a long time and really deeply, strongly believe in their mission, which does bias us in our opinions and views of them, think it's the opposite where we kind of victim blame. And, and I think that's, that's wrong as well. Somewhere in the middle where, Yes, the software is not perfect. Uh, we are working on it, and it is important for us to get there, and it is the right direction to go down. But in the meantime, people need to really pay attention and really work on, on not, uh, not abusing the system or misusing the system. So, uh, so I think like they're, you know, on both sides of this conversation, the general public's overreaction and the, uh, the Tesla community's kind of brushing it off. Uh, I, th I, th I think there's, we both need to come together uh, a little bit because it is really important. So, um, during Yo-Yo's trip, he said, I have met with over 8,000 people on the road in three continents and 25 countries and have demonstrated that not only is it possible to drive an EV across the world, it is absolutely exhilarating and brings along great, it brings along great adventure along the way. I have also seen the potential and power of the EV owners community, which when leveraged can make a great difference in the world. And I could not agree more. As you know, through the referral program here with my channel and my code, we've actually saved now over 450,000 pounds of CO2 from entering the atmosphere. That's just one channel. That's just one avenue, one little speck of dust in the kind of uh, in the kind of universe that that is the community of of uh, of Tesla and in all the th all things Elon. So, I'm really curious what you guys think about this. Um, I know some of you Excuse me. I know some of you are going to be upset. I know some of you are going to be angry at him. Um, I've seen, you know, Reddit comments to, to that effect. I think it's wrong. I think that he, in general, is doing something great, um, and this was a legit accident. And maybe to to one point that Elon had a while ago was that it was like people that have become more comfortable with it are are the ones more likely uh, to get into accidents because we're a little bit more trusting than somebody that's new. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm really curious what you guys think about it. L leave, leave me a comment um, down below. Uh, and, and before, you know, we wrap up on this, uh, I, I do just want to add, 
uh, this little bit of news, which also came last week, which is that Fiat Chrysler warrants 4.8 million million Jeep Dodge Chrysler. By the way, that, that's like an order of magnitude plus some more than all Tesla's ever made. Okay. Uh, Jeep Dodge Chrysler and Ram owners not to use cruise control. Guess why? Because it will not turn off. And guess what happens if your cruise control doesn't turn off? You, you hit something, right? Um, unless you're in the movie Speed or something like that. But point being, um, this isn't an isolated thing. However, Tesla gets an oversized amount of attention uh, whenever there's an accident here. And I think like there should be a, 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 a strong amount of attention that Tesla gets when it comes to this because uh, we're talking about autonomous vehicles. We're talking about self-driving. These are new technologies. Tesla is pushing the boundaries uh, of this. This isn't a cruise control, something that's been around forever. If you do recall, as, as I do from when I was a kid, when cruise control was first out, my grandparents laughing about people that got into accidents because they put the car on cruise control and got in the back seat. So this isn't new, um, but Tesla being the one that really is pushing the envelope here does get an outsized amount of attention for this. And a lot of times it is kind of uh, uh, very clickbaity and fraudulent and, and unfair. So I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, I gave in, I've given you the facts. I've given you my take on it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Hit me up on Twitter. This is a really interesting uh, topic that I think we need to discuss. So uh, thanks for sticking with me on that and stay tuned because I am going to interview him tomorrow and we're going to be talking um, even more about it. All right, next to some kind of fun and yet crazy news. Um, and this is not the right page to show you. Uh, I uh, tried to take advantage of, of Elon feeling good uh, recently on Twitter. And he said, uh, you know, he posted, for some reason, this is the best I've felt in a while. Hope you're feeling good too. And uh, I responded uh, kind of uh, jokingly, like, you know, the couch must be working. Um, and while you're here, how about a date on the Model Y unveiling? Well, he responded uh, kind of oddly with uh, an exact date of March 15th. And that to me was was strange because it's very specific and it's far out. Uh, then my buddy Ryan McCaffrey over at Ride the Lightning Podcast, uh, you know, kind of pressed him on it. And, and he came back with, no, 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 I just kind of made that up uh, because of the Ides of March sounded good. But consider it real. Now, here's the kind of very interesting part about the Model Y is that we could unveil the Model Y anytime from late this year to mid next year. So March 15th is about right. I feel like this is probably one of the most conservative and probably the most accurate estimates we've ever got from Elon. A lot of us were expecting it to be this year, which it may still be. We don't know. Uh, so when he said March 15th of next year, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, first, because I'm like, oh, that, that, that actually sounds about right. And, and then next, that he was putting it on the calendar like that. Now, the way... I imagine things work. Uh, you know, there is Elon does get pushback from his teams from time to time, as we as he's admitted. Uh, and and one of the things that was funny about that is he said, uh, uh, if, you know, if he says it's March fifteenth, and then doubles down on it, I'm pretty sure it's going to be March fifteenth. So I don't know. I'm calling it uh, official. Uh, mark it on your calendars. It'll be spring of next year sometime. L let's call it March fifteenth. Uh, I'm hoping to attend the event um, as I've attended several of the last other ones, what, by which I have my my things hanging in the background is my little, uh, every time I go to one, I, I make sure to, to steal the lanyard so I can kind of have the proof that I was there. Uh, so anyways, I'll be going um, and I'm really excited about it. If you're unfamiliar with what the Model Y is, uh, I do have a video that I did on it um, about it, uh, which is uh, doing pretty well, actually. It kind of keeps coming back. And this is uh, getting into the details of what the Model Y is. It's a crossover SUV, similar to what the Model 3 is to the Model S. It is the, you know, that same thing to the Model X. So it's a crossover SUV, but cheaper, simpler, um, and should be using this thing called this flex circuit wiring, which uh, if you think about the wiring in an electric car, there's quite a bit. Model S and X have around three kilometers. Uh, Model 3 has 1.5 kilometers, so a 50% reduction there. Now this one has a 95% reduction over that, down to 100 meters. So if they're able to do this with the flex circuit, I think it would be um, it would be amazing. This is what Elon talks about when he says it's a revolution in manufacturing. Um, so really excited um, about that, you know, and uh, because of that, or because this is gonna take some additional batteries, there is some news related to that. That, uh, wrong page, let me show you the right page. The right page is this one. This is that 
uh, Tesla flies in the new battery production line for the Gigafactory. So this happens uh, from the, the German group Groman um, that is that built this new thing for the Gigafactory, which is going to help Model 3 production, but I also believe is going to, you know, work for things like the Model Y, semi-trucks, and all that. So, uh, you know, in, in theory, like this new thing that's happening in Gigafactory will also help Model Y in its production, you know, if, if when it does start, which is... Uh, slated, I believe, for 2020 at the moment. So I'm actually really curious. Are you guys going to hold off? You know, it's been a couple years already. Do you prefer the Model Y? Uh, do you think a crossover SUV is more what you need in your family and you may as well just keep waiting and kind of let it ride? Um, you let me a comment down below and, and, and let me know about that. I personally am going to be ordering one. Um, I think for my family, it's a better fit. I really love my Model S and my Model 3. However, the Model 3 is a little bit small, and so I probably will be getting the Model Y and replacing the Model 3. That, that's my current view. Um, and as you, as you guys know, these things kind of uh, shift over time. So, But let me know uh, what you're going to do um, because it, it is an interesting decision uh, to try and figure that out. All right, next up, we have uh, some crazy stuff that happened and this, I think, goes to Elon's testament. You know, Elon gets a, a, a lot of uh, a, a lot of bad kind of uh, press because of his reactions online and his kind of openness. Honestly, when you think about it, he's very candid. Um, and you know, when you've when you've reached that level, I feel like you've you've earned that right. Honestly, uh, he's not the kind of guy that that you know is going to let people do things or tell him things that he doesn't want to do or want to hear. Uh, I think he's open to feedback, but you know he also can can tell people uh, to to piss off. So he can do what he wants, um, and and that's the short answer. Here's an example though of him having those reactions, acting like that, but in a much more productive way. So. Consumer Reports, who I, I, I mean, they've had their issues with Tesla. I respect them greatly because of uh, how they go about things. If you don't know much about them, it's pretty fascinating. Like they, when they buy a Model 3 to test, they don't tell Tesla, hey, give me a car to test. They go buy it themselves, completely blind, you know, unbeknownst to them. And they do all of their stuff with it. So really interesting. Like they really try to be objective here. Um, and then they've had issues with Tesla in the past. Here, uh, they they fall they fell short. This was a this was published on the twenty third. Tesla Model Three falls short of a Consumer Reports recommendation, meaning it is not recommended. Um, and it was all related, or you know, one of the things was it was related to the braking distance, which is how many feet does it take to go from sixty to zero miles per hour. Um, and so, because this was longer than anyone else in their class, uh, Consumer Reports did not recommend it. And so with that, the thing that was interesting is Elon responded and said they're going to fix it via software update. So here's, uh, you know, kind of like the whole story here is that Elon actually spoke with them after that about the results. Uh, and then later, um, you know, he planned the, the fix. So, you know, literally that same day that they, they posted this, this result that he is going to fix it. And so within a day, they, they, he saw something like this, addressed it, and came back that he is actually going to make a change. So to me, um, that's kind of amazing. And here his tweet, uh, him and his, his good buddy Ryan McCaffrey um, talking about it, stating that the firmware fix for upgraded brake performance on standard Model 3 started rolling out yesterday. Uh, should improve braking distance by 20 feet for repeated heavy braking events. Thanks, Consumer Reports, for excellent critical feedback. Okay, so think about that just for a second. Their Consumer Reports has an issue with the Model 3. They publish the report, they talk to Elon. Three days later, actually uh, within 24 hours, it's fixed. With the next 24 hours, it's rolling out. And then the next 24 hours, he posts this tweet. So, cause you see, this was the 26th. He said it was yesterday. And then two days earlier was, was the actual report that came out. Um, it's incredible. This, this is why, uh, the community loves him. Um, yes, he can be, uh, abrasive and, and, and say things that, that upset people, but he's a real person just like you and me. Um, he's not some God or something else. He is a very real human. Um, you know, and, and, and he has these things now he's because of what he's done and his, his successes, it's, you can't ignore, um, you know, his ability to get things done. Like, even if you hate him, you can't, you can't deny he's accomplished some amazing things. And I think that like he's earned this right to do this. And here he is using this right, this power that he has 
to do something extremely positive and improve uh, improve you know the consumer experience. It's just amazing. So I think this is one of the a, a, like kind of a shining example of where uh, it's it's working kind of in his favor. Now one thing about this, just to 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 point out why this even matters. Um, first off, you know, for collisions and things like that, but also when you want to calculate the zero to 60 time, you actually take the braking distance time and then kind of reverse engineer it to figure out how fast you can go. Now, one of the big things that's odd about the, the braking distance is that, you know, there's essentially a couple things. There's the grip on the tire, the weight of the vehicle, and, and, and how much, you know, braking power can be applied. And all of those things kind of need to work in harmony. So some of the things they can't really change, right? Like, like they're not going to go give a free tire upgrade to every Model 3 owner in order to improve it. So the other things that they can control via software, I think, is where Tesla has a unique advantage over others. So this to me is is really fascinating um and and i'll put a link to it in the description there's a great video from a channel that i really like called engineering explained which you know back in a while ago figured out the zero to 60 uh speed or acceleration uh, physical limit based on the best uh, braking distance of any vehicle out there, which was, I think, the Porsche 918 Spyder. So it, this braking distance, even though you don't typically hear about it in the media, is actually super interesting and important from an engineering standpoint. So uh, this, to me, was just a great example of Tesla kind of at its best. Right. They get some critical feedback. They talk to the company. They figure out a fix. They push it out within, you know, literally three days and the consumers are better off. We're safer. And this thing is 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 is, is resolved. Uh, so I'm curious what you guys think about that. Um, you know, do you like how Elon kind of works and operates? Is it is it bother you? Do you even care? Uh, let me know in, in the comments down below. All right. Next, uh, I have a few tweets here. Let me just make sure I have them lined up properly. Uh, that all were kind of from Elon. So this is like my Elon Twitter roundup because he, he just keeps throwing them all out. And they're not big enough to be stories in individually, but I think there, there's some interesting points um, j just to, to mention there. So uh, the first one I have here, uh, maybe, no, doesn't look like I have it. Let me try again if I can go back. Here it is. The first one I have here um, is a response uh, about the supercharger v3 so here you have it um elon responding to someone on twitter uh christian prenzler um about the supercharger v3 so if you don't recall uh there you know elon uh, teased this a while ago i think porsche uh, was doing a thing where it was 350 kilowatt out or sorry kilowatts which is like an insane amount of speed to charge a battery on the latest earnings call, uh, JB and Elon kind of went back and forth talking about the trade-offs between charging speed and um, and capacity or like how long the battery would last. So, uh, you know, they said that they're going to be unveiling something soon. And so here you go. So Elon's talking about it, saying that major improvements all around new superchargers late summer. So that's pretty soon. That'll be before you know it. Still some outstanding questions are, you know, which cars will be able to use it? Will it cost more money than the regular ones? Where will they be installed? All that kind of stuff uh, we don't know yet. So more to come on that. All right. Next, Elon responded to someone else um, about uh, superchargers in South America. And he's saying at the around the end of next year, which is not great because that's that's quite a ways away. Um, but, you know, if you're in South America and you have a Tesla, you've been, I mean, yeah, like you're pretty an early adopter down there because without superchargers and stuff, it's probably extremely difficult to get a reliable charge on the go. So uh, they are coming um, end of next year. There you go. Next, red brake calipers on the Performance Model 3. Oh, and I lost the tweets. Let me see. It's it's one of Ryan's tweets. Let's see if I can find it, if it's the right one. Um, and if not, I'll just give you the, the short answer. So, uh, okay, there you go. So, uh, Ryan, uh, he, he, I mean, if you didn't listen to his podcast yet this week, you should, he and Elon went on this whole, uh, conversation over last week. That was just crazy. So he was asking about the red calipers, which originally I don't think they were going to be included. Um, oh, and it looks like I don't have his reply here, but, uh, Elon did respond saying that, yes, the red brake calipers will be included in the performance model three. So, uh, there you go. So there's a little uh, Elon Twitter roundup for you. Next, we're going to be talking about... Oh, there you go. There's the red brake calipers. Now I found it. <laughs> okay, cool. So 
This next story is one that I found um, on Twitter and I thought it was super interesting. And so um, it was about China building this road that will charge your car as you drive. Now, uh, it's, it's a little bit crazy. So let me kind of explain. I'll give you the short, the short version here. It has a clear concrete top. And I put concrete in quotes because it's not, I don't believe it's actually concrete. Um, it has solar panels underneath um, that power highway lights and up to 800 homes in the area. There's a test track, which is 1,000 meters long, um, and it doesn't have wireless charging yet, but, but it can, says the developers of it. And it's part of Ch China's EV self-driving push. Now, um, there's some quotes here, and let me see if I can get the video for you, because the video is pretty amazing. So you can see it here on the left of this track. That's the solar panels. It's kind of sectioned off there. Um, and you can see what it, you know, a close-up of it, what it looks like. Let's see if I can go full screen. Yeah, so you can see that you can see through, but it's a road and it gets driven on, so obviously it's it's not great. Um, and yeah, it has some, some pretty cool properties. Now, you guys may remember that this isn't exactly new um, technology. So there's a couple things here, um, and I'll switch over to uh, some other stories here. First off is that Honda actually invented this a while ago, uh, back when they had the Fit EV. This was March of last year. And um, their, their, uh, this charging capability that they developed is one that gives you 25 miles of range for every one mile of infrastructure. So it's a, it's, a, it's a one to four ratio. And so what you can do there is essentially drive over it um, and as you drive, recharge or just not use any battery. That's kind of the, the thing. You're probably not going to actually get a charge out of it. But if you're just not using battery wallet because it's powering you, then it's effectively the same thing. Um, and there's a cool graphic here kind of explaining it um, that, you know, you could have this electric priority lane. I love this idea because it's very much like uh, video games I played as a child uh, where you would drive over the little strip on the road and give you an extra boost or something like that. So, you know, all of that um, coming together. So you have the thing in China, which is actually here. There is an old Indiegogo that happened that I actually donated to a while ago in the U.S. called uh, Solar Roadways, which are working on similar things here. Um, and then you have, you know, Honda doing that. And then Honda also unveiled that they're going to bring back the Fit Electric, the Fit EV, with 186 miles of range and under $20,000 price tag. That is impressive. I am actually really, really stoked on that because I think that um, that this is going to sell well. You know, I've always I've been saying it for a while. Like the Model Three is incredible, but I don't consider it a mass market vehicle. And, and the reason I don't is because it is so insanely advanced and in such a nice car. I mean. Honda or Toyota could basically take the Model 3, strip out half the stuff, you know, replace the screen with some basic instrument clusters and all that stuff, and, and still get the same range and all that for a much cheaper price, and people would love it. So I am excited about this. I am, you know, applauding uh, Honda for doing this. I really hope that they uh, push hard on this because I think they and Toyota, and, you know, we already know about the Nissan Leaf and all these guys, I think they have a real shot at, at producing the mass market car, right? Tesla is the sizzle and these guys are going to be making the steak. Um, so, uh, so I'm really excited about that. Um, so there you have it. And then I think lastly, this just popped up that BMW just announced a wireless charging option, not exactly the same of like driving on the road, but one where you pull up over it and it'll charge your car as you sit on it. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, so it's, you know, in general, um, I like that all these other manufacturers are doing a lot of stuff in this, in this realm for electric cars and providing really cool, uh, really cool tech, you know, things that Tesla isn't doing. Um, so it's really great to see all of that stuff. Okay, folks, that is the news for today. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me. Um, don't forget that you can get a, a full dry, a full day's rental in a Tesla Model 3 by going to teslanomics.co slash 100K um, and then subscribing and sharing that more and more importantly because that is actually how you'll get uh, even more and more entries. So lots of fun stuff uh, coming on there. I'm going to do, uh, do the Q&A now on Crowdcast, which I will post later in the week. So um, if you want to join on, if you want to get be a part of that, make sure to just sign up on the newsletter and then I send out those invites on Monday mornings. Um, happy Memorial Day to everyone in the U.S. Um, and thanks for watching.